Hey guys, it is Landon Blake from topbysurveyor.org. This is the second video where we're actually doing some math. Remember, you got to hang in with me. We're just doing some basic arithmetic. We got to get you guys some some fundamentals before we actually get to see how math can be used as a tool, right? So hang in there. I'm going to do a couple videos that show you how to work with fractions. So for a lot of you guys, this is going to be review. So in this video, we're going to do the first part of working with fractions. Okay, so here's what we're going to cover. We're going to talk about the parts of a fraction. We're going to talk about what do the fractions do? Why do we even have fractions? I think fractions are a pain in the butt. Why do we have them? We're going to talk about uh, how you work with common bottom parts, right? Okay, that sounds like, you know, what are we, are we trading blue jeans or skirts here? No, I'm going to explain it. We need to know about how to do common bottom parts. We're going to talk about how you add, subtract fractions. We're going to talk about how you multiply and divide fractions. And we're going to have some other videos where we talk about improper fractions and how you convert fractions to decimals and decimals to fractions. We'll do that in a different video. We're just going to cover these basics in this video. Okay, so let's talk about it over here on this other whiteboard. We want to talk about what are the parts of a fraction. Okay, we're going to keep this really simple. So I'm going to draw a fraction on the board. We're going to talk about parts. All fractions have three parts. Okay, so you have the top part. You have the bottom part. And you have the dividing bar. Okay, and you can write fractions actually with a couple different dividing bars. So this is the diagonal dividing bar, and this is what I call the horizontal dividing bar. And they're just standard ways that we write fractions. They don't have anything to do with math. You know, for all I know, they could have come up with a system that wrote fractions like this, put the two numbers in circles above each other, right? This is, this is just the way they came up with it, right? It was, don't blame me, it wasn't me, it came up with it before I came around. Okay, but these are the parts of the fraction. You got the top part, the dividing bar, and the bottom part. Now, mathematicians like to make stuff hard, so they got to come up with, you know, numbers of, the names that make them sound smart. So, uh, mathematicians call this the denominator. Sounds like some kind of sci-fi movie, right? With robots from the future that come back to the past. This is the numerator. Numerate. See, and they make it hard. You don't even know how to spell it. Numerator. Okay, so denominator, numerator. I just like top part, bottom part, dividing bar. Okay? And fractions, what do they do? They're just, well, they do a couple things. They, well, they do three things. So they're just a different way to represent division. And we're going to talk about this. It means one divided by four. Okay? They also represent fractional parts of a whole, so pieces or parts of a whole. Like, you've got a pizza with 12 slices, and I take six slices. I have a fraction of your pizza. I have half your pizza, one half, one half of your pizza, right? Okay, so there are, way to, there are, there are ways to represent parts or fractions of things, okay? And, then, and in this case, fractions of numbers, okay? And fractions also are a way to more accurately represent certain things, certain amounts in a decimal system, in a base 10 system. We talked about that in the other video. Okay, so there is no exactly perfect way to represent one-third or two-thirds or three-fifths in a decimal system because the digits behind the decimal go on forever, which is, you know, kind of impractical, not very much fun. And so you can use fractions to represent those portions of a number in an exact way. Okay, so that's what fractions do. Okay, so let's talk about common bottom parts. Okay, that's called common denominators. That's the technical term, but I like bottom parts because it just sounds funny. All right, and so common bottom parts means if you have two numbers, one-fourth and two-thirds, okay, a lot of what we do with fractions, so adding and subtraction, just it just it, it, it just works better. It just, you know, it works better if these numbers are the same. The bottom parts are the same. They're common, right? Same bottom parts. Now you're going to see we don't need that as much when we do multiplication and division of fractions, but we need it when we do we need it when we do subtraction and addition, and then we'll also I need to I'll, I'll include simple how to teach you guys how to simplify fractions. You got to know how to do use bottom same bottom parts. Okay, so let's just see how you get same bottom parts. Okay, so I'm going to give you some rules of thumb, and I apologize I didn't Google this. There may be some tricks to this. Okay, but I'm just going to give you some rules. So if we want to, if we want to get a common bottom part here, okay, here's the first thing I want you to do. This is the first rule you can try. You just multiply your bottom parts together. Mul 
multiply your bottom parts together. Okay, and then as part of this rule, you got to do the same thing to the top. Do the same thing to the top. That's a math rule that you can't forget when you're working with fractions. Do the same thing to the top. Okay, so let's do this example, and then we'll do one more example. Okay. So let's just multiply these two together. So 3 times 4, we get 12. So we're going to have two numbers with a common bottom part. The bottom part's going to be 12. Now we need to know what numbers do we put on, on the top. Well, it's a little bit tricky because we got to do the same thing to the, to the top part as we do to the bottom part so that the fractions stay equivalent or equal. Okay, so to get from 3 to 12, we multiplied by 4, so we went times 4. So that's what we want to do to get our top part. We're going to multiply 2 times 4. Okay, so that's going to give us 8. Okay, over here, to get the 4 to 12, we multiply by 3. Okay, so we want to multiply this part by 3. We've got to do the same thing to the top. So we're going to get 3 over 12. Now, we have two fractions that are easy to add because they've got a common bottom part. So we just take 3 plus 8 is 11. The 12 stays the same. You don't have to do anything with the 12. So it's 11 twelfths. 1 quarter plus 2 thirds is 11 twelfths. Okay, but in order to get that work, you've got to figure out what the bottom part is. Let's do another quick example. So let's take 3 fifths oh, and 7 eighths. Okay, so we need a common bottom part. Now, let's just try a rule down here. I need to add a rule now for this example. The first thing I want you to do is multiply them together. Then I want you to see if you can simplify them. Simplify means you try to make the number smaller if you can by doing some division. So let's just, let's do the first part of the rule first. So we're going to get 5 times 8 is 40, okay? So we're going to have two fractions now with 40 as the common bottom part, okay? Then we got to do the same thing to the top part, okay? So let's, let's just do the math. We'll start over here. So to get 5 to 40, we multiply times 8. And you can just write it down right here like I do. Okay, so that means we got to do the same thing to the top. So 3 times 8, all right? That's 24. Get down here, to get 8 to 40, we multiply by 5. Okay, so we got to multiply the top by 5, so 7 times 5 is 35. Okay, now we have two fractions with the same bottom part. Okay, but 40 is a big number. So what we want to do is we want to see if we can simplify this, right? So what I always try and do when I simplify, and we'll do another video, is I always try and say, can I divide both of these things by 2? So can I, can I divide these? 40 divides by 2, right? Okay. 24 divides by 2 evenly without a fraction. Okay, so that's 12. But 35 is an odd number, so it doesn't, it doesn't evenly divide by 2. Okay, so then I just start going up in my numbers. Okay, so I'm saying, can I divide both of these by 3? Yes, 24 divided by 3 is 8. 35 doesn't divide by 3. Can I do it by 4? No, 35. See, odd numbers are tricky. 35 doesn't divide by 4. Now, 35 divides by 5 without a fraction, without a remainder, but 24 doesn't, so 5 doesn't work. 6 doesn't work, 7 doesn't work. So, guess what? This is as simple as it gets, right? 40 is as simple as, it, as, as it's going to get. Okay, I'll do some more simplification, and we'll look at some numbers that do simplify. We'll, we'll do a separate video about how you can simplify. But that's how you get common parts, common bottom parts, okay? So, remember, multiply the bottom parts together, do the same thing to the top parts, and then if you can, try and see if you can simplify. And we're, I'll tell you how cool I am. We're going to write a program in Python that simplifies fractions for us. Because that's how awesome we are. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so let's just talk about adding and subtracting fractions. It's really simple. The very first thing you do is make sure you have common bottom parts. And then you just do the math across the top. Across the top parts, okay? So let's look at some examples. I'm going to change colors just because I feel like it. So let's do So let's do each one of these. I'm going 
to move so I can make sure you guys see them. So first question you want to ask is, do you have a common bottom part? Yep, you do. Eight's the common bottom part. Then you just do the math across the top. Three plus five is eight. So we've got eight eighths. Anytime you guys see a fraction that has the same number in the top part as the bottom part, that means you've got a whole number again. This is equal to one. So anytime the top part is the same number as the bottom part, you can rewrite it as one. That's called simplification. Okay. Let's do this next one. Do we have a common bottom part? Yes, we do. 13. So we just do the math across the top part. 9 minus 5. Pay attention to this sign. If you're dyslexic like me, you got to remember you add or subtraction. So we're subtracting 9 minus 5 is 4. 13 stays the same. It's a common bottom part. Okay, the answer is 4 thirteenths. Okay, this can't be simplified anymore. Okay, then we've got 4 fifths plus 2 fifths. We've got a common bottom part. That's good. We can just do the math across the top. This time we're adding. 4 plus 2 is 6. Okay, the bottom part stays the same. 6 fifths. Now here, I'll give you another rule. Anytime you have a fraction where the top part is more than the bottom part, that's called an improper fraction, and you can convert it to what's called a proper fraction, where you're going to have a whole number, so in this case, one, and then whatever's left over, one-fifth. And I'm going to teach you guys how to do that in a different video, but that's a simple rule. Okay, let's look at our last problem here, three-quarters minus two-fifths. That, we got a problem. Don't try and do this math. If we don't have a common bottom part, you need a common part, bottom part before you add or subtract. Fractions, so we can make this a common bottom part like we did in our other video. So we're going to make this 20. So 3 quarters is going to go to 15 twentieths. And 2 fifths is going to go to 8 twentieths. Okay, now we've got a common part. We can do the math. 15 minus 8 is 7. Remember, you just do the math across the top. Same number on the bottom. That can't be simplified anymore. 720 is the answer. Okay. All right. Real quick, let's do multiplication and division of fractions. Now, the nice thing about multiplying and dividing fractions is you don't got to worry about common bottom parts. So it's actually easier than addition and subtraction. So let's work a couple examples. We're going to do multiplication first. Simple rule. Two-thirds times one-fourth. You just do the math across the top and the bottom. 2 times 1 is 2. 3 times 4 is 12. Now, this can be simplified. Okay, anytime you have two even numbers like this, they can, you can usually simplify, right? Okay, so we can simplify that. We can say, we're going to make, we're going to divide both sides by 2. So we're going to get 1 sixth. That's a simpler fraction. These are the same. Called equivalent. They're the same. This is simpler. 1 sixth. As a general rule, Math teachers like simpler fractions. <laughs> Let's look at another example. Let's do four fifths times three eighths. By the way, when I'm doing multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, I like fractions with the vertical bar, not the diagonal bar, because the diagonal bar messes me up because I'm dyslexic. So this is my recommendation if you're dyslexic. Okay? So four fifths times three eighths, we just do the math across the chop. Four times three is twelve. 5 times 8 is 40. Again, we've got two even numbers. We know we can divide this down. I always try 2 first. So 12 becomes 6. 40 becomes 20. I still have two even numbers. I divide by 2 again. Now I get 3 tenths. Okay. So this is the answer, 3 tenths. That's the simplest fraction. Okay. And these are equivalent. They're the same. This is the simplest form. Okay, now let's do division. Division is just like multiplication, only you swap the order. You do top times bottom and bottom times top. Okay, let me draw that with a couple different colors so you can see what I mean. So when we're doing multiplication, we do top times the top, bottom times the bottom, like this, straight across. Right? Hopefully you guys can see that. Okay, division, you change that. So if we're going to divide 3 quarters divided by 5 eighths, you swap that. You do multiple, multiply here and multiply here. Bottom to top, bottom to top, top to bottom. Okay, so let's do that math. 3 times 8 is 24. 4 times 5 is 20. Okay, this is not simple. Both of these can be divided by at least 2. So if we divide by 2, we get 10 twelfths, right? Those are both divided by 2. Can be divided by 2 without a remainder, so that gives us 5 sixths. 
Okay, so that's the answer. Three quarters divided by five eighths is five six. That's the simplest form. Okay, let's do one more example of division. Just so you guys can see that again. Okay, so I'm going to do six sevenths divided by one half. Okay. Remember, we got to go like this top to bottom, bottom to top. Six times two is 12. Seven times one is seven. Okay, half of six sevenths is seven twelfths. Can't get any smaller. This is the simplest form. There you go. Look at everything we learned in just a few minutes. We learned the parts of a fraction, what the, what do fractions do. We talked about common bottom parts or common denominators. We added and subtracted fractions and we multiplied and divided fractions. Yeah, buddy. All right. So we're do, we'll do another video in a week or two about, uh, fract, about improper fractions and simplifying fractions. And I'll try and research some rules and tricks to simplifying fractions. I always kind of had a hard time with that. So if you watch the video and you've got a trick for, Simplifying fractions that I can teach the kids. Put it in the video, please. Put it in the comments to the video, and I'll, I'll definitely uh, look at that. And, okay, in the next video, we're going to talk a little bit about number lines and how number lines can make a coordinate grid, which is pretty cool. We're starting to kind of get close to some surveying stuff, so I'm excited about that.